right, and hello and welcome to uh, welcome to uh, Enemy Zero. Enemy Zero. So Enemy Zero is a series is in a semi series of games, but all they actually share in common is a sort of digital actress Laura. They all have the same kind of character, but it's completely different histories, completely different genres. Yeah, there's D, Enemy Zero, and D2, and they're all very different. They're all completely different. Uh, here's the case. You can't really tell here, but there's actually a really cool uh, 3D effect that they put in here. Like, a, they do that kind of thing on their case where there's, like, this kind of neat 3D effect. But you can't, can't really see that on camera, I don't think, but in any case. Uh, it doesn't come with a whole lot of instructions. It comes with, like, one very, very slender instruction booklet. It just kind of expects you to... And then, like, uh, instructions on, like, kind of how to play, at least to a certain extent. Like, the shoot. And, like, probably the thinnest instruction booklet I've ever seen for a game. Like, I think this is, like... Oh yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's like it's it's a fold out. That that that's it. That's all you get. So it's like, good luck, idiot. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even tell you. It doesn't even really tell you the controls. It tells you a bit how the thing works. I mean, a little bit about the controls, but I mean, it's. Let's just say. Uh, well, one thing, I have the Japanese version of this because the English version is ten times more expensive. That's just the way it is. And this, 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 this is actually disc zero. So, uh, disc zero is almost entirely cinematic. They used almost the entire thing for, like, this FMV, so enjoy it. Oops. I mean, it's cool. And there's one other thing on this disc, which is like, which is training. And training is good because you're the gun. <laughs> the gun, uh, it's it's a, it's very unwieldy, and I'll probably end up dying a lot because. You have to time things in a very strange way, and you can't overcharge the gun. But, just to show you. So we can actually, you can see the opening, opening training. If you go on to start, it just tells you, you have to put in another disc. So we'll just hop in training real quick, I just, just to show it, just to show a little bit more about the game, I guess. Just a second, I uh, want to pull up the stream so I knew, know what's going on, actually. I forgot that I usually have chat up somewhere else, but yeah. Yeah, just needed to uh, pop out chat real quick. I had considered like putting in a sort of a uh, auto translator, but there's not all not that much dialogue really. So I think we'll probably be all right on that end. All right, so it just says you have one shot. So this is the free roam mode. And what you're gonna hear is like whenever we get close to a creature, the uh, sound will start beeping. See, like that. Uh -huh. 
and you you want to charge it up just enough but if you overcharge it it goes back down to zero oh there we go Uh, that wasn't enough. Uh, yeah. See, uh, see, this is how, <laughs> and this is how it goes. It's very, I'm going to do it one more time just uh, because the timing, even I played it last night and the timing is just very hard to get a hold of on just when you need to, uh, when you need to actually use use it okay there we go but it's a bit like as you already see there's kind of a uh, instead of a uh, classic horror theme like D this has an alien theme and got it that time so, also, that's done by sound. So, both the getting near it is by sound, and knowing when to let off the trigger and, you know, let it let the uh, projectile fly is also based on sound. So, yeah, that's a it's a whole thing. But in any case, I think we'll go ahead and switch to disc one. Let me uh, head over to my Saturn. Um, so today's costume is my special homage to Twin Peaks. I'm basically dressed as the Black Lodge, if anybody's familiar with that. But here we go. No intro movie because they took an entire CD for that. So here we go. Go ahead and go from the beginning. I was just practicing last night. So, the only difference between normal and easy is that easy gives you more shots with your blaster because it has to be recharged, because of course, and it makes the puzzles a little bit easier by providing more clues. Some puzzles actually have zero clues. It feels like you're just literally guessing. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, um... We're just going to go easy because I, like, why bother? <laughs> and I also have a uh, walkthrough that I'm probably going to look at a bit, but I have the maps up. And the maps, yeah, I don't want to have to keep looking at a terminal to find the maps. So... The story is mostly told through action, not through not through words. So, honestly, like, I don't think playing the English version would make much of a difference. But here's our digital protagonist, Laura. And now, this is the other type of scene. So earlier you saw the action scene where you kind of free move. You have tank controls, kind of like in, you know, Resident Evil. Um, these scenes are like mist. You can press like left and right to look around. You can press forward. And, but unlike mist, you don't have a mouse cursor. You can just kind of press button to interact. And so you spend most of the game just looking at stuff and hoping that something happens when you press a button. And I pressed a button. Ooh. But there's not really much in the way of music.
there's some uh, some sort of you know atmospheric kind of sound effects going on but not much more than that and i kind of like that in that way it really reminds me of alien like the first alien because it's there's a real sense of claustrophobia as well as kind of the silence is kind of deafening in this in a way i mean this is supposed to be a ship full of crew like a full crew on it so here i'm picking up two of the most important things which are a, a disc that you'll need to use later so notice that there's very minimal ui uh you know nothing else is on the screen not usually not so uh uh, there's a menu that you can press with hit with the uh, left and right uh, top buttons and This this is how you save the game, So you can only save in these scenes. You can't save in an action scene But there's also like Resident Evil a limited amount of saves uh, I'll show you so each time you save it uses up a charge And you have to go through a little scene every time you pull it out because this game, so normally you get 60. Here you get 99, and it's you can just keep saving, so much easier. Another reason, um, I may end up dying a lot because the timing, as you saw in the shots, and yeah, it's, they tried. <laughs> they definitely tried. So there's one more thing to get, I believe, here. Yeah. This is the earpiece, and this is what you'll be using to be able to te detect whenever the creatures are around. That's your sound monitor, a little beeping. So these, these things are basically a computer. This is the computer that runs the station. And you can go into there and every time you go into any of them, you have a nice little FMV sequence. So here there's a video phone to contact other members, information, and database, which is just kind of a... An, actually information information gives you tells you what's going on in the uh, building so one thing you'll need to do on that is you'll need to use it to unlock places and lock places possibly so you see that this place is returning to earth but it's an emergency mode and we're can't select anything right now because we don't have the rights to do it not from here what we can do from here is we can make some video calls and yes the UI is always slow you cannot skip through it you just have to wait on everything hey they worked they put in some real time doing this so <laughs> yeah Oops, I went back to information. Um, let's go to video phone. And let's make some calls. So in theory, this is everybody on the place. You are Laura. But let's see how David is doing. Connection refused. That's ominous. So he basically just said your uh your key you need to find the key to your locker. 
he was just in the locker room and you'll need to go to head to your locker. So at least that's a clue. Kimberly has an access code. Mercus. Network error. And Parker. I I don't think Parker's doing all right. I I think there might be a problem here. So you're and this is your first sign that uh yeah, things aren't things are things are maybe even worse than you thought. I think this game is very cinematic, and I feel like the fact that it's so slow is on purpose. I think it is for the for pacing. They wanted to actually kind of have a sense of pacing to this game. So now we're going to head out and head out into the action sequence. Note that we do not have a gun yet. Basically, it's just saying emergency. First, we'll head to the storeroom. <clears throat> And the storeroom is another uh, first-person type place. And here we go, the storeroom. Storeroom doesn't really have a whole lot to it. The main thing here is another terminal, a terminal with more powerful access, but we can take a look at a few other things. But yeah, it is pretty limited what you can move around, but at least that kind of limits the amount of time that you'll uh, end up kind of spending not knowing what to do. And there's generally only one thing to interact with. Or in a, you know, as it goes, like, you can either press A when you're at a stopping point or you can yeah or there's nothing there to interact with so that does simplify it a bit you'll just end up pressing the button wherever you go that's just the way it is so here i'll need to actually uh go and unlock some rooms because right now you'll see everything is locked and when things are locked or when she doesn't know how to do something it's it's quite funny I'll, I'll show it off she she pretty much like just bangs at it and is like I don't know <laughs> so let's go ahead and unlock stuff and here we can turn all the locks off Now we can get to more of the, uh, more of this tower. It's also a very, very dark game, <laughs> which uh, I think adds to the atmosphere. So yeah, the hallways are pretty much, you can move around uh, with a tank tank controls, forward, back, left, and right. You can 
you can kind of strafe using uh, the X button to go left. It takes a step to the left or a step to the right. That can be useful sometimes. You can use the left and right buttons to look left and right. Or you can hold C and do free look. And that can also be kind of useful if you're just trying to find something. So a little bit, yeah, not, not the best, not the best, but it works. All right, so now, since I actually more or less know where to go now, head to, uh, I don't think I can get to here yet, but I wanted to show you. <laughs> when she can't do a thing, she just hits it or just shrugs. It's I, I, her reactions are pretty great. Did I miss something? I think I... Uh, I'm lost. I think I'm lost. I get lost easily in games like this. Okay, that is not where I need to go right now. I mean, for the Saturn and for kind of free roaming 3D, it looks pretty good. And and they, and I think they can afford to do it because there's not a long draw distance. Okay, so I know where I am at least. So that would be the stair. Well, what's labeled is the stair room. If you go into the monitor, if you go into the ship monitor, you'll just see that it's called the stair room. But as you'll see, there's it's it's not stairs. So I'm going to go to where uh, George told me to go, which is to uh, go to the locker room. So this thing you see there, that's how you'll recharge your guns. But we're not going to do that right now. We need to go into our locker. Here I'll go ahead and pull up because I know to use it, this is how I get into my locker. Whenever you can actually use something, you'll, whenever you press A on it, it just does the thing. There again, it's like a point and click game, but it is a very simplified interface. I mean, uh, on, you know, talking more about the way things look, I mean, it, it it feels pretty seamless between these very pre-rendered, like some of the pre-rendered stuff, like these, the very pre-rendered areas, and then the areas that are not pre-rendered, like the full 3D areas. Like, yeah. And with these little transitions, I mean, 
the game, it doesn't feel like it's really a, uh, a feel like it's a uh, big change or jolting to go from the pre-rendered into this uh, uh, free room 3D part. So, I mean, this is a, I mean, you'll see, if you tune in tomorrow, you'll see uh, D being played. This, this improved on D in practically every way. A lot of little quality of life things, and... Uh, a lot of quality of life stuff, and the graphics have improved. I mean, very cool, cool games. I have not played D2 for the Dreamcast, so I'm not, I don't really know how that game works, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to use the thing. Use the thing on the thing. So I just got my ID card. So I just have to hop under this, and this is what they call the stairs. It's it's not the stairs. It's a it's a lift. But okay, stairs. Fine. <laughs> in the basement one. The tank controls do feel a bit weird to use. So sometimes I just use the uh, side step to make it feel a little more natural. Alright, so here we've got a two ways that we've got door there. We have some shutters down here, so uh, that's a uh, Let's head to the power room. And this is the power room, and there are no clues to this puzzle. It is literally just guess. I mean, there's kind of a clue. If you back up, like you see that there's a couple of arrows there. So there's a couple of arrows there, but there's a couple of arrows on all of them. But you see, the only thing that gives you a bit of a clue is, you see on the left and the right ones, there's three lights. So you know that three things need to be turned on. Which three? You could... It doesn't actually take... Whoops. <laughs> accidentally press left. It won't take you long to figure this out, really. But, uh... It's... This is the answer. And then... Power.
So I am going to take a save here because we're about to come into a place where I could possibly die. And there's no continue, you just have to have saved it. So time to take five minutes to save the game. Hooray. See, it used five, like uh, it brought me down to 95, so it's even less, as I said, in the normal, where it's you only start with 60. So, limited amount of saves, use them wisely. Honestly, even the 60, you'll probably be able to get through the game with just the 60% power. So in here, I'm trying to get to Parker's room now. And this can be very tricky because this is where I mentioned that uh, I may want to, uh, well, I wanted to save here because you hear that? Oh. Trying to get to Parker's room. I think this is it. Nope. I get turned around easily, and this is a maze. Okay. Don't know where I am. Here we go. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of nerve-wracking because, like I said, you don't have a gun and you die in one hit. There's no health. It's you either get the shot off or you. Get... Okay. And I'm looking for something. Oh yeah, I can't accidentally press forward there. Press forward there, it just, yeah. There we go. Kimberly's code. Oh, five, two, six, I think. Oh, three, two, six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Grim? I mean, this was a very impressive, very innovative. I mean, this was like early, very early in the uh, development, you know, of the Saturn. And it is impressive, and it's incredibly cinematic. 
And I'd like to actually, one of these days, actually play D2. So that was 0326. Yeah. So now I can call Kimberly. <laughs> right. Their loss. And now once you put in the code in once, you can access it normally. Okay, that cut off a little worse. Okay. Let's see if I can get anything from Ronnie now. Basically, just be careful as you're going around. So let's exit here. I think I might use another save because still don't have a gun. Yeah, if you think you can't see, I can. I can't see anything. I just kind of. At, at least there's not that many points uh, to look at in the room, so I can figure out which one's the door. All right, well, time to uh, time for me to forget where I am in the maze because I'm bad at directions. Oops. Here we go. Out of it. Ah. Uh, and yeah, the the sound design. I mean, with that, just even you know, not I can't see the creatures, but I could hear them coming. I mean, it's very much a uh, very much taking uh, clues from aliens and uh, inspiration. And uh, not a bad place to take inspiration from, I'd say.
mean, this is an incredibly ambitious project. I mean, D as well. And you'll and everybody will get to see that tomorrow. I forget who's running D, but that's going to be exciting. That's going to be awesome. Right, so now I'm out of the stair room. Okay, we don't need to go into the by the way, when you're going backwards, you can't just hold back, you just kind of hop back. It's kind of neat. I mean, I think that's useful. And, yeah. So now we're going to go, which, on the on the terminal map, you'll see that, uh, basically, uh, what you're told to do is uh, head to Parker's room. Nice, right? Definitely gives you that uh, sense of foreboding. Like, what am I gotten into? Well, this door's broken down. So, yeah, Ronnie had told us to go to Marcus's room. So that's where we are. Um... I don't think Marcus, Marcus is doing too well. This has a purpose. She's not just being morbid. But much like Mist, you will spend you would spend a lot of time just pressing button, using things on things. That's how these go. a gun now. Nothing else to note in here, but now I have a gun. Now you're not totally defenseless, but your shots are very limited. And there aren't that many charge stations around, so... You'll need to use your shots wisely, and... Often, as in uh, these sorts of games go... Uh, running away is probably 
the better option most of the time. But I like how this pre-rendered scene shows the doors busted in the same way that you see it here. I mean, there, there you go, like more of that kind of seamless effect that it's kind of seamless. Okay. Let's go back and look at these maps. Somebody did a uh, great thing and they took screenshots of the maps so I don't have to keep trying to figure out where I am. So here... Oh, I'm gonna save it. Uh... Um... Yeah. I'm just gonna hop in here real quick and save it. Because I'll probably die. Here's my gun. All right. All right, a little happy face. So yeah, each save takes four. So you have, in this mode, plenty of saves. You'll, as I said, you only have 60% if you're playing on normal. But there's not really a good reason to play on normal versus easy unless you just want the puzzles to be a little bit more obscure. Okay, so now I'm going to have to face my first real threat because I need to get to the elevator. Track a bit. I lose my way so easily on games like this. Okay. So this. Yeah, that was Marcus. Marcus's room. So now I'm going to go here. And then take a right because I'm heading to the elevator. See? I didn't get- and you can't even see them, unlike in training. You just have to rely completely on your, uh... On your, uh, hearing. So, yeah, I figured that might happen. That's why I saved it. Uh... Game? <laughs> It even does this when you go out of the menu. So... Voice record number 013, Laura Luis. Parker was in the face of the face of the face of the face of the face. Marcus was in the face of 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 the face
basically just giving it a little bit of a recap. So essentially talking about how you found uh Here we go. Now let's try this again. And yeah, I, I gave a warning about how how weird and uh, difficult the combat in this game is. And but there's some places that you can't actually you don't have a choice. Like here, I need to get down this corridor. And there's no way to slip by, essentially. So just have to judge the sound. What? Um, I think they were behind me, actually. And the fact that it's all in darkness makes it all the more difficult to kind of, you know, I, I think it adds to the atmosphere, to the very much horror, very horror-themed aspect of this game. ボイスレコードナンバー013ローラルイス。it even takes power when you load. Not only saving takes power from your little device, but loading does as well. So you have limited time to get through this game, or limited saves to get through this game. So instead of, um, well, some games which may have a time limit, as uh, last night, if anybody was watching late, Dark Savior, one of the, uh, one of the parallels has a time limit. This doesn't have a time limit, it has a save limit. A hard save limit. Much like Resident Evil. Okay, usually the loud, that means... Got it! Ah, you see, you can't see them. They're invisible. So that's all like... Well, hope, hope I hit them. So it's kind of like an alien, but also a predator because they're invisible. I'm going to use a uh, use a map because otherwise you're really just going through here and not really knowing what you're going to do. Thank you. 
I don't have a gun now. I should have saved it. So now I'll have to try to kill the thing again. This time I'll remember to save in the uh, elevator room. This is probably the only part of this game that I don't like is this kind of weird instant death combat stuff. Voice record number zero one seven Laura Luis. Parker was shot in the face by a creature. Yeah, this time I'll make sure to not not die. Hopefully. But as you see, if you let them get too close, you die. If you let the gun overcharge. It doesn't work. So There we go. This time, gotta save it. This time, remember to save so I don't have to do that again. Luckily, in all these corridor sections, you always have the option of saving. So let's do a save. All right. All right. Now But yeah, you lose your gun here, which I just got the gun. Like, seriously, guys? Seriously? It's like you finally get a gun and you're like, yeah, and then womp womp. Seriously, you drop the most important thing you could have had. Great job. Went all through that all through that trouble to Okay. Oh crap. Is this not a thing I can do? What? This map is not right. Well, at least I'm right here.
Okay, I need to go left. Now I'm looking at the uh looking at the uh walkthrough. <laughs> Voice record number 013 Laura Luis Parker を襲った姿のない生物によってマーカスの死亡死体を確認しました姿のない生物は複数いる模様です、uh, Basically what she said was yeah Marcus and Parker are dead and there's I don't know how many of these creatures are left Yeah, basically there just seems to be a bunch of creatures, but no no real doesn't Yeah. Seems to be a bunch of them. That's bad news. Now I get to lose the gun again. Gotta get up into the vents. Good thing we got some nice big human side ventilation. Now we have Vent Maze. And fortunately I have a map here so we don't have to just... Laura, you are now in 4 and 5 rooms. I am in the 8th room. But there is a different place in the room. Yeah, she's just kind of telling you how to get to her and where she will be eventually. It's... Yeah, I mean, there's like... Let's not get lost in the vents. I am I am I am bad with directions in real life. And here's a conveyor belt. So that's another thing that can happen if you are facing get a conveyor belt going the opposite direction. Good luck. Nice. I also, you know, take note that in the three D scenes, full three D scenes, you don't, you never see Laura. It's it's good that's first per, first person because then you wouldn't have to see you know a low poly whatever version. You either see her in these cutscenes, or you see her. Uh, you see, uh, you see through her eyes, so that's pretty cool, I think. And uh, yeah, getting over the limitations of hardware. I mean, there's a lot of. I think that's one of many clever things that just kind of is something just to deal with the fact that. Uh... Okay, how do I do? Okay.
George. And that's George's key card, which looks wildly different from yours. Who knows why? But at least it makes it easy to tell them apart. If they're too similar, then I'd get them mixed up. I think that's a good choice. And it's a gun. Heck yeah. To make up for the one I just lost. And hey, if I could pick that gun up again, I could have two guns. But no, you can't have two guns. Okay, I forget what to do here. Uh, okay, let's look at walkthrough. Okay, okay, yeah, I have to use a key card. Probably save it again. Yeah, I'm just going to go back in and save it. <laughs> it's like, don't feel like going through all that again. Notice you don't have to kick it out again. The event is already down, so that's slick, I think. Alright, let's save it. All right. So yeah, I definitely feel like this is an incredibly ambitious game. I think they did a great job of it. And I think it's definitely worth playing. If like if you have a chance to play it, it's worth just exploring it. You will get frustrated with the action bits, yes. But I think overall, it's, a, it's an excellent cinematic experience. Go right. Oops. 
I don't know if my gun is charged. So, but I saved it. That's why I saved it. It is a little annoying that it takes so long to, like, load. You have to go through the whole pulling out your little device and pressing the button and then listening to the recap. Voice record number 015, Dora Luis. Elevator in the Kimbari no iru floor in the Kauto Chu. Parker to Marcus or Sotta Sugata no night savits in the Sogu. Elevator Yuri Dashiste, Dacto Kaiso and Nigeko Mimashita. Kimbari no iru floor in the Kaimas. Basically, I'm in the air ducts uh, recapping extra stuff. Is I'm in the air ducts now and I'm going to meet uh, Kimberly. Kimberly is the one that's been talking to us uh, more recently. Got in just in time. There we go. Wow, really kicked the heck out of that one that time. All right, so now. Let's charge up the old gun. Okay, yeah, I actually have to say, use gun on charge port. There we go. And... Yeah, who's, who's already been in the vents? It's George, but 
Dang, if I can't see any of the letters. Okay, go. Here we go. Now I have a gun. Okay, and that's pretty much all I need to do here. It's gonna Save it. Yeah, and those watching, if you think this is slow, just imagine if you didn't already know the way through. Which I, first time I played this, I did play it. Played it first time with no clues, no walkthrough. You spend a whole lot of time wandering around, occasionally just getting super killed. Yep, see? I mean, I thought I had it. You have to have it at the exact right time. Charge, start charging at the right time. And, yeah, it's... It's a, it's a thing. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll probably... Uh, right now, I'm not drinking. I'm actually having a uh, nice, uh, refreshing... Uh, electrolytes drink. Amino acid and electrolyte drink on my spooky mug. Ooh. Yeah, I figured I probably wouldn't survive that, so always save, like in every section, always save. ボイスレコードナンバー015のローラルイス。Here we go. Let's hope I get the timing right this time. Now I need to go here. Now I need to go right.
Okay, here we go. Gotcha. I think I bet just went the wrong way. Oh no. Now I'm turned around. Uh go down and make a right. Okay. Yep, I took a wrong turn. Okay, I'm at the tool room. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, okay, I'm going the right way now. Just need to go straight. Okay, I think I have to kill this one. No! I was there! Oh my god! I was actually right there. That was the exit. Yeah, these these sections are. I mean, they're harrowing. I mean, I you know that that's a different type of horror than the, uh, you know, there's the kind of creeping horror of the atmosphere and the isolation. <laughs> Tiny xylophone. <laughs> All right, I'll give this one more try. Uh, I only have about 10 minutes left. Let's see if I can make it through this time. Voice record number 01 is Dora Luis. Elevator is on the Kimbari on the floor. I'm going to go to the park and the park. I'm going to go to the park. Elevator is on the duct to the duct. I'm going to go to the park. Basically, the, uh, whatever you hear the lower tone, that means. You aren't looking directly at it, or it's off, off, yeah, it's off, it's not near light of sight. 
So that's that's what the other tone means. So the how fast it is is proximity. The tone is whether it's in front of you or behind you, or just not in front of you, basically. All right, so this time, all right. If you notice, you if you get cl too close to a wall and you and you push up against it, it actually like turns you, and that's very annoying. Makes it this game all the harder to. Oh no. No, 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 no. Don't do that. What? That should have hit. What? Ah, it didn't go off that time. I mean, you have to have this weird multiple sets of timing going on uh, for these invisible aliens trying to hit you. You have to, whenever you hear it scream, you have to have your f gun already charged up, but not, not past maximum, because if you hold it too long, the gun overcharges and you don't get a shot off. That's what happened there. I held it on for like one millisecond too long, and it was like, nope, you don't get to shoot. I mean, it's absolutely maddening. This is the only part of the game I don't like. And, but it's not even the major part of the game. I feel like if there is a way for me to use like a pro action replay or something, just make myself invincible, that'd be great. Because, yeah. But in any case, um, I only have about five minutes left. I'm not going to try to go through that section again. Uh, those of you watching, you should uh, stick around and uh, check out Grim Shins. We'll be playing the awesome game Baroque. I actually picked, because of watching Grimshins play, I uh, I actually picked up a copy of the game. I have not played it yet, but um, I'm excited to give it, a, give it a spin and see what it's like. But anyways, I, that's, that's the first kind of sections of Enemy Zero. Uh, it's, the combat is real rough, but and if I was a little more practice, I could probably do that a little better, but it's the movement is a little bit janky, and it doesn't feel like it was made to be an FPS. But in any case, that's, uh, that's all for me. Thanks for joining. But yeah, I guess we'll just, uh, Grim's probably, Grim's right there, probably ready, so let's just, uh, go ahead and move on. I mean, I guess watching this, you all can decide whether or not you want to play, but yeah. That's, that's, uh, yeah, Baroque is very cool, and yeah, I'm going to be sticking around to watch that, definitely. <laughs> 